Hey! Well, hi! Are <laughs> you ready? Like, Jeez, yes, you were the fine. one that was supposed to we're start We're good. This. We're in this. Okay. We're in this to win this. So, uh, last time we discussed some things, and this time we're gonna discuss more things. Yeah. 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 Uh, and so specifically, we're gonna talk about, um, the differences of Street Fighter V versus the rest of its series and other games. It's about time we actually talk specifically about, about this, this game. game. See, I, I participated in that last part. I'm gonna be Boobs McGee. I'm gonna be other boobs, McGee, but you could also make out other shapes of her body. <laughs> oh, look at that! They did switch up her car her costume. There's a pattern down the side. Oh yeah, uh, that's makes sense. <laughs> um, so immediately off the bat, um, we'll start with the blatantly obvious. The art has drastically shifted. It's like um, they still. Tried to keep a little bit of the goofiness of the cell shading of the last game, but really wanted to push uh, f to really have graphical capabilities um, to make it make sense to be on the PS4. They wanted to have a game made specifically for consoles that made sense for it to be on consoles. So one of the things that they, it seems like they really focused on was the art of this game. I think it's fantastic. I can agree with that. Cammy specifically, her facial structure looks great. Um, yeah, like, before they didn't really have varying facial degrees unless yeah. like they were going to have a super ultra used on them and then their faces were like ah, right before <laughs> they got hit and what's weird is that this game i know that when they came up with the concept for this game they wanted to have it um be the first game where they focused specifically on a at-home release both pc and playstation related not so much just an arcade game that got ported to a console they wanted to have a street fighter meant for those who could own the game mm. um and with that it's got that street fighter feel to it but it's got a little bit more like more of a little substance in there in terms of what we're seeing uh, with each character, it, also with the fact that the the story is moving forward, um, we're seeing yes. major growth with some of the main characters, Cami, Ryu, um, and even Huge especially with there. Ken. Um, the the growth with Ken, I think, is extremely. You're actually good. seeing real, uh, like actual continuity between the last one and this one. Yep. Um, also, a lot of characters missing, and you're wondering what happened to them. Exactly. That's another thing that I haven't quite thought about. Like, uh, there's the stage in here where it's uh, a Shadaloo fortress, uh, where in the back you wow. see Bison, you see Vega, you see Balrog, you see Fung, but Sagat is nowhere to be found. Yep. So that's probably one of the biggest questions in everybody's mind is, what happened to Sagat? He's always been a part of this franchise, except for Street Fighter Three, but whatever. Fair enough. Um, also, usually, because there's been a little bit of time lapse, usually, in, in certain directions, because, uh, like, 2 took place before or after 3, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that right? Uh, I don't remember. Yes. 3 was supposed to be the Uber prequel. Yeah. Um, ah. There's also, um, obviously, the addition of some of the new characters, one of which, Nathan, I'm sorry, Intangible, is currently playing um, in her relation to one of the other Street Fighter characters, which is pretty fun. Um... What I like is that the new characters, save for one or two of them, Nikali and Fung, um, have sort of made their play, made their home in Street Fighter. Uh, she, her style seems really cool. Um, it's like she, she's Sea Viper, but not as unfocused as she was. You, if that makes that? any okay, sense. Okay, you did one. Um, I hated Sea Viper. I did too. But it seems like she's got she's got the similar concept in the lightning attack and such, but that's her only thing. She's not a mixture of eight other elements and then having to figure out which strategy you wanted to play as. She was so unfocused in the last game. Yeah, she really was. Um, so that's like some of the story elements. We can also talk about mechanical differences. Mm -hmm. um, let's pick new characters. Um, so one thing that I'll, I'll start with the obvious one, the uh, V gauge that you'll see and that uh, bottom, the bottom corners right above the uh, ultra bars. Mm -hmm. um, those are completely new to the game. Uh, and you'll also notice if you did play Street Fighter 4, you'll notice that the uh, ultra combo gauge or the ultra gauge is nowhere to be found. Um, yeah. Which I say good riddance. Yeah. That's so I was fine with not that. a fan. I never use birdie, so I also I, the mechanic of only having access to that if you're getting your ass kicked, mm -hmm. like that, you're you're missing out on a game mechanic because you're just too good. You know, like it doesn't make it. I understood it, it but I understood it as being the equalizer. But I, 
I don't know. Yeah, I mean, in a game that's based off a of skill, I feel like you shouldn't need an equalizer. Yeah, equalizer, personally, but that's near, neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. All right, so... Um, so in terms of, like so we have this V gauge and every character has uh their um oh oh my I don't even know how I just did that I, <laughs> sorry um every character has their V or their V action which is the two medium um attack buttons together can I there we go what does that really uh -huh. <laughs> okay <laughs> <That's fun. laughs> so notice how my V gauge the, the red the uh, has gone up. <sighs> Um, so that's like that's one like it's it's going up now, and I can use when it reaches full, I can use it to uh, oh no, do one of these things. Ooh. Um, basically, it seems like it adds an an additional uh, layer of depth to each character in their own way. Uh, for Ryu, it uh, coats his fists in what looks like lightning, and from there, his critical art or his super move changes. It actually, both story-wise and mechanics-wise, changes, and I think that's awesome. Um, for Ken, it adds um, fire, fire to, to, his, to his to all of his special mm -hmm. moves, um, therefore doing more damage and getting more hits and such like that. Um, it, it's that extra little thing that the character has. It's like a, it's almost like a, how Mortal Kombat X had oh. that individual um like that was Mortal Kombat X, right? Which one? What to do? What? what, what uh, no, I'm sorry. That was uh, Injustice. Uh, Injustice. Didn't play it. I know you didn't play it. Uh, Injustice had this extra little thing because all, basically the the, co the commands and the the attacks were structured the exact same way, but each character had a little uh, extra ability that nobody else had. Um, for Batman, he could call down bats and ha uh, chain them into his combo or, or whatnot. So I feel like that's a little bit of a, an, a, a more fun way to add variety to these characters. All right. So that's uh, there's also you know the the typical ultra combo that uh, everybody has w at least one of, and things like this happen. Yeah. What? Oh my god! <laughs> I've never seen that. Um. Okay, that's cool. Just, I'll just walk right into that. That's cool. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, oh, good. So I know you also wanted to talk about how this game is structured in terms of its DLC. Yeah, I because think that's, that's that is important. one of the biggest things that has been talked about for for this game. I mean, it, before we go on, I, I will say there are other things that are different about the game. We mentioned yeah. how it feels, and you'll have to just play it to really understand it. I mean, there are other videos and people out there that are talking about uh, specific differences in it, how certain combos work now that didn't before, and yeah. they'll even talk about the frame rate, um, about the the hit or stun chance, like things like that. They can get um, into the really and super. If you technical. are really hardcore about it, then yeah, you can go over that. Um, but if you are not at that level yet, it's those those aren't going to do you any good. Um, but we can talk about DLC. I'm actually going to hand you the main controller, drink okay. some coffee, and then you can explain the DLC. So the DLC in uh, this game is structured around the idea that um, they don't want to release separate versions of the game for every big thing that they come out with mm -hmm. anymore. Um, they want to... Yeah, I know, we're not logged in. Um, they want to... Instead of having separate games to download or whatnot, they want to just handle things through updates or DLC, you know, big things like that, that also would remove, potentially, having to spend 30 to $40 on each new version that comes out. Because last time it got out of it got It really got out of control. There were one, two, three, four versions of Street Fighter Four, And while that's, I mean, and each cool. each one had costume packs. Uh, yes. And... Every single one of them had costume packs. Uh, one of them introduced uh, the uh, choice between which Ultra move you wanted. Um, obviously new characters and stuff were introduced. This one, what they want to do is reward the players who spend time enjoying the game by giving them fight money, or also Zenny, which is the other in-game currency. Uh, and this in-game currency that you earn through playing, obviously playing the game, you could use for when uh, new characters come out, new stages, updates to the game, bigger th costume packs. You use the in-game currency to purchase those characters and such. So, in a way, it would end up being free for you to get that stuff. Here's where some of the issues are involved. 
Double down four. I'm gonna Double go down over four. To you. I think you have no life. I have oh no, life. no, that's the good. That's the that's the fine one. There's like I think it's double down two or three where you have no life. Oh. If you get hit, you die. Oh. But you get like four times as much. It's pretty crazy. Oh. No, the challenge one is pretty cool. Uh, so another thing about so speculations of the DLC. There's some saying that it it could uh aid in destroying part of the market. Um, it may not affect a lot of AAA titles in the sense that those AAA titles may use this as a muse and come out with DLC very similar to where they will uh they'll release a DLC that is free constantly over time. Um, and because of that. Other companies, other AAA like like Zynga and Mobile Market or or just indies um, who try to constantly come out with things where where they expect you to pay for that DLC, but only in increments of like a dollar here or there. People will start may start criticizing them, saying, "Oh, well, you don't have in-game currency that I can use for this DLC, so why aren't you getting with the times?" And because of that, those companies or those games are at least now not making money uh, like they were before. Now. A DLC and paying for it is is a controversy that has been yeah. in forever has been around for not literally ever but has been around for a really long time in, in gaming history. So there are some people that could totally support this one way or another. I understand it. Um, my my feelings toward it are kind of thus. You could look at this as saying there there are only so many characters, right? And if you're used to some of the other Street Fighters, uh, like Marvel vs. Capcom, any of those other the games, there's a lot of characters. Yeah, there are not a lot of characters in this game. There's what ten or twelve? Tw- uh, actually, sixteen. Oh, I'm I'm crazy then. Sixteen. Sixteen is not terrible. So, but I, I feel like a lot of them have like well, twenty-four we know you're crazy, but... or so. Um, but anyway, so sixteen I feel is not personally a lot. However. They're constantly coming out with these new characters. And you have plenty of time to explore the depth of 16 characters, and that's fine. Like, there should be no reason to complain there. But in general, you could look at that as, oh, you haven't given us a complete game. There aren't a lot of characters. There aren't a lot of stages. There are two modes. The, uh, the, what is it, the challenge mode and, um, I think the ability to purchase DLC and something else or whatever are just not unlocked right now. You can't get them until March. And... That may annoy some players, but you could also, in my opinion, turn around and say, you know what, if if they did wait to have all of that when it first came out, we'd be waiting like another year for this game. Instead, yeah. we have a fun game that we can play and enjoy, and they can constantly update if things get out of hand, as in characters are too right. powerful. Like Cammy, I think she's too good. Yeah, um, that's fair. But if there, you can look at that and say, okay, ultimately... Um, I got a game a little bit early. It's not perfect, but it's going to be, and I got to enjoy it in the meantime. Plus, something else to consider. If you compare the release of this game versus Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 4, if I recall correctly, there wasn't that trial mode that you got in the later versions to go over literally all of the combos Mm -hmm. that you could possibly do for each character. In fact, you didn't even have a lot of characters in mind. You had the basic arcade mode, you had training, you had versus, you had a little bit of online play, but it wasn't anything really crazy or, like, dramatic in its release. Um, So... To a point, yeah, like this one, um, there's no real straight up arcade mode. It's it's in fact just a character story where you just play a couple of battles as a character to understand their special moves and their game, main game mechanics. And to be honest, I think it's sort of a pacing thing too. If you release all of your content, everything that you've got in the bank right now, that's a lot of stuff. That I mean, they could have all those characters all set up and ready to go. It's very possible. If you do that now. That's a lot of stuff to try and comprehend, especially when you have a completely new game, uh, with, well, rather, a new fighting system with a lot of different mechanics for each character. That's a lot of things to grasp. These sure. characters are the base characters for a reason. These are the ones that really ca- capture a lot of the main concepts that you're going to come across. Dalsim, zoning, poking. Those are his two big things because he, he got so completely redone. Character now that yeah. he used to be. Actually, I felt like he was very gimmicky back in the day. I feel like he's a lot less gimmicky. He's now. matured. Th- these characters like are character being literally has, the character, both story wise, Mister Fantastic. Yeah, the both uh, story wise and mechanic wise, these characters have matured over the years. And there's even big drastic differences between Ryu and Ken. Something that people have been complaining about for and years, for so long. Now we have it. We have it. Now it's time to yep. enjoy it also, at our in own case pace. You're wondering, and if you do like Akuma, there's a combo that used to be his that is now belongs to Ken. Um, it's the 
I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm going way off topic. I'm so excited about that because I've always wanted Ken to be my favorite, but that damn combo, I love it too yeah. much. But now it belongs to him, so there you cool. Go. Anyway, uh, so that's like you you could view it that way. But um, I think ultimately we should we should end the episode here. And uh, while he's playing, I'm going to come with the question of the day, which we should be, I could talk about a lot of things, but let's talk about DLC. So for you, how do you feel about the fact that they're going to come out with... Uh, free DLC, as in you purchase it with in-game money. How do you feel about that as far as, uh, like, it, it, is it cheap? Is it, like, unfair that we didn't get a full game? Or is it the other way around, where this is the best thing ever? I'm so glad you did this because I'm getting free content. What are your views on it, and how would you change things if you could? Alright, I like it. I just ended it with the Denjin Hadoken. I think that's the best exclamation point we can have on this episode. Super fireball for you Americans out there. And for those who are wondering, the next episode, it's on. Yeah, we're just going to play now. Enjoy.